So this paper starts with figure one, which is just an observation. If you stimulate one pyramidal cell in layer five with a high frequency train, you can observe what appears to be an inhibitory signal in other pyramidal cells. And that inhibitory signal in figure two is shown to have a frequency dependence. And so in figure two, they show a double loop where a train of slower train of action potentials can, can bring about a very fast loop and then a loop on the same time frame as the loop shown in figure one. And those two loops, they, pre, they suggest hypothesize might be from different types of interneurons because they know already of this paper by Reyes at all that shows that these interneurons can receive different short-term synaptic plasticity between pyramidal cells in them and themselves. I don't know how I'm saying this, blah, blah, blah. But synapses from pyramidal cells can be different from the same pyramidal cell depending on the target cell. And so they are hypothesizing that this is indeed what underlies these two loops, the fast loop and the slow loop shown in figure two. But the rest of the paper is focusing on developing and identifying the mechanism behind the slower loop. So figure three shows the frequency dependence and the number of action potentials necessary. So A and B is different frequencies of trains. C and D is action potentials in a train. And this is again demonstrating the sort of high pass or low pass, the sort of filter, filtering characteristics of this connection. What does it send through? and what makes it and what doesn't. It tends to be trains and it tends to be higher frequencies. So a high pass filter. Figure four showing that it's GABA blocking by cuculin and also reversal potential as expected around minus 70, 75. It actually is a little lower than that despite being in whole cell That's why they also make the jump to the next figure where they make dendritic patch because the lowered reversal potential does suggest that the signal is not coming into the soma. Otherwise, the reversal potential should be around the reversal potential for GABA of the pipette solution. So then they make dendritic patch recordings and they show that they can see a bigger signal in the, in the apical dendrite and it's faster and it's, that suggests that the synapses between the bipolar cell and the pyramidal cell, the inhibitory synapses from the bipolar cell are likely to be on the apical dendrite. And then the last two figures are just The triplet, which is a bombastic figure, where they record from the pyramidal cell the interneuron and the postsynaptic pyramidal cell that receives the inhibition. They can demonstrate all the things they've demonstrated in the first four figures with the triplet. And the bonus that they get from the triplet is that they can also fill the cells. And when they do that, they're able to count contacts and see that the contacts are biased toward the end of the apical dendrite, blah, blah, blah. It's super cool. Now you try and go in the literature and find another paper that's so thorough and that so nicely leads you by the hand to understand what their observation is. I don't think you'll find one. At least not one that beats this paper. It's a fabulous paper. And forever, Gilly and Henry should be proud of it. <coughs> What do you think about them apples?